One, two, three. It's, it's day, day 56, 56 on the PCT. On the PCT. <laughs> Close enough. Close enough. Like I'll fuck it because we have the other layer underneath, so we just, whatever. I didn't think it would. Work. And it dried up by the middle of the night when I had woken up. Yeah. Well, I was walking. I was walking. Okay. Like four days away. But hikers are hanging around in the middle of the day, relaxing, enjoying a day off from hiking the trail. There's little. There's Dave the kitten. Dave. Yeah. Dave the cat. Dave the cat. Dave's gonna be heading to Canada. Dave's gonna be heading. <laughs> With uh, you guys would say your trail names on it on Gemma, Gemma, and Ozzy, uh, Gemma and Ozzy, and and so Dollar I, I gotta explain. <laughs> Ozzy, Ozzy is an American, and Gemma is an Australian, even though he's called uh, <laughs> we flip flop names. Ozzy, yeah, Ozzy from I'm America, Gemma, at the beginning. Gemma from Australia, <laughs> and Dave from uh, the Bud Farm, right? <laughs> Dave from the Bud Farm, Bud from the Bud Farm in uh, Wrightwood. No, tell, tell your name on camera. You'll be on my you'll be on my video. I'm Ronnie. Ronnie, okay. He stopped by and said hello to us. He's been a mountaineering and hiking fan his whole life, and he's he's planning for when his kids are grown up, he's gonna take up the trail after us, right? Oh yeah, that's right. As soon as you can. I've been wanting to to do what you what you guys are doing right now. You know. I like to hear it, Austin. Yeah. Austin from Georgia, just out, fresh out of the Marine Corps, and wanted to celebrate this freedom by going on a hike on the PCT. 100%. 100%, 100 man. <laughs> Simplified. As I said earlier, we're taking a uh, zero day today here at the KOA in Acton. And um, I've watched videos, uh, YouTube videos, over the past couple of years by other hikers who've come through there. And it seems like they either love this place or hate the place. So I thought I'd give you a kind of a real short, quick tour of uh, what it's like here. And I'll give you my opinion on what our stay has been like to this point. So this is the uh, the main office where uh, you come into when you first walk into the, to the KOA. Um, I would say that right now the place is super quiet because with the, um, the COVID-19 virus, they're not allowing any um, vehicles here. So the only people that are staying in the park right now are hikers. So it's really super quiet, but they've been super friendly to us. Hey, thanks a lot. Happy birthday. Thank you. I'll walk right in and just give you a quick show of what's inside the uh, main office here. A little bit of souvenir stuff. They've got uh, pizza crust. Yeah, I know. And uh, ice cream, which hot hikers always love. A little bit of snacks, some basic stuff up here. On this side, cold drinks. And a little bit of snack food here. So, let's go to the inside. Just real basic stuff, but still nice to have. And then over here. Can't wait to see that. Okay. Over here, by the way, I'll show you. This is the uh, broken ice cream machine. So, when we came in yesterday, they were desperately giving away as much ice cream as we could possibly eat because it was all melting. So got lots of free ice cream out here yesterday. Walking down here beside the building, it's just kind of a little, eh, it's kind of a nice little patio area out here that nobody's using right now. There's a fire pit, which I, I suppose they have running at some times. And then kind of a, oh look, a loose baby. Hi, where did you come from? <laughs> and then uh, a bunch of hiker hang out right here just under the nice shady spot to hang out and visit and then and then a big open field with picnic tables on it really nice place just to kind of hang out if I guess if somebody was here with kids it'd be a good place for them to run around and play and then I'm going to zoom in over here they got these big giant Indian style teepees that um, can be rented out yeah, if you're 
one kind of a novelty experience there. Behind the teepees, you can see actual cabins, and those can be rented out per night too. Not sure the price of the cabins or the teepees, um, because we're all, as you can see, staying in tents. That's actually our tent right here. Uh, it was $15 per night per person. So for me and Goldilocks, 30 bucks a night to camp here. But uh, in my opinion, yeah, well worth it, even though it's just tent camping, because they do offer a lot of amenities that other campgrounds don't have. Over here is a swimming pool, which obviously we will not be swimming in anytime soon. Uh, not surprised that it's not being maintained right now because they don't have any customers here to use it. Um, volleyball court over there. I'm not sure what this building is here, but uh, this is the, uh, the bathroom. They've got his and hers bathrooms, and they do have showers inside, which is awesome. Uh, and they're not quarter operated showers either. They're um, they're free. I mean come in and take as long of a hot shower as you please um, If you don't have a towel then we'll rent a towel out to you behind the bathroom now They've got a couple of sinks here. This is uh, They've got all the spigots turned off water spigots uh, So this is literally the only place you can get water is right out of that sink right there, but it's fine. It's Plenty of drinkable water, you don't have to filter it or anything like that. Uh, walking back towards uh, where the hikers are hanging out, you can kind of see a lot of big shade trees. They're allowing us to pitch our tents pretty much anywhere we want in here. So even though it's a warm day, there's plenty of shade and everybody's really comfortable and cool. So that was just a, a real quick tour of the Acton KOA campground. Um, I thought it was a nice place. I mean, it's as good as any other campground we've stayed in, and maybe eh, maybe it seems nicer than most because the only people here right now are hikers, so it's not busy, but oh, yeah. decent place, you know, uh, 30 bucks per night per, for a couple, even though you're sleeping in a tent, still, you know, good uh, amenities, so worth 30 bucks a night in my opinion, definitely worth a stopover. Well, good morning, everybody. It's day 57. It's um, 7 a.m. right now. I'm sitting right here at the table at the KOA in Acton. Getting caught up on my videos because I'm a couple of days behind. Hopefully uh, get caught up on those and get them out before we head out later this afternoon. Headed for Agua Dulce and Points Beyond. Good morning. It's day 59 on the PCT and Goldilocks and I are just Chilling out here this morning in the KOA campground. <clears throat> We're sitting here with a couple of other fellow through hikers. Got uh, Jason, Jason from Texas, Lugnut from Wisconsin, and uh, we're just sitting around here solving all the world's problems. And uh, so anybody wants to know how to get this COVID virus situation straightened out or get America back on track, you ask the four of us, we've got it all figured out. Um, We'd actually meant to take off a little bit earlier this morning. It's already after eight o'clock, but an hour ago as I was getting ready to break down the tent, uh, as soon as I got the fly off, some damn crow flew over and took a big crap right on top of my tent. So I had to get a hose and rinse that off and now we're letting it dry out before we pack it up. But uh, we'll be on the trail here shortly, headed towards uh, Agua Dulce, where it's rumored they have a fantastic uh, hamburger waiting for us. at. Uh, Sweetwater okay. Grill. Sweetwater Grill. All right, you guys. All right. We are out of here. God bless. Hope, Have a great hike. Thank we'll, you. We hope we'll catch up with you guys in Kennedy Meadows, huh? We'll see you. you are a huge oh, inspiration yeah. on what you're doing, <laughs> considering uh, what you've been through. It's absolutely amazing. Well, hey, thanks a lot, man. I'm having a blast, and uh, the best is yet to come. Right. So we'll Stay see you guys up the road. Or when we come back, we'll just laugh. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay, now we hope that we're going the right way to get back on the trail. We'll find out. Yeah, hey, uh, standing right here at the junction of the PCT. There's a sign well, that way and that way. I only stopped here because I want to point out these damn railroad tracks. They run within a couple hundred yards of that KOA campground. In my opinion, that was really the only major negative of staying in that place 
is they have trains running on this track constantly, which is not a big deal during the daytime, but at two o'clock in the morning when they're coming through here with their horn blaring, good Lord, good luck getting any sleep. So uh, I'm gonna be happy to leave this, leave these train tracks behind. But for now, we're headed up the trail, headed north. Forgot to mention that besides the uh, railroad, there was another very unexpected distraction during the, especially during the night and early morning, the roar of African lions. And uh, you're thinking, what the hell am I talking about? Well, if you remember that uh, zoo enclosure we showed you back by Big Bear, apparently when they closed that down, they relocated here to Acton and the, uh, there's a, there's, I don't know if it's a zoo or a, or a, some kind of a protective preserve thing, but anyway, among other things, they have African lions there, and holy mackerel, those things are loud. There's nothing more disconcerting than laying there in your sleeping bag at in the middle of the night and uh, hearing the loud roar of an African lion just down uh, on the other side of the park from you. So, eh, uh, interesting, interesting stuff here on the PCT. Unexpected. Goldilocks, what's this you're standing beside? This is the Pacific Crest Trail Completion Monument. It says that it was completed June 5th, 1993. June 5th, 1993. So 17 years ago, no, 27 years ago, sorry. 27 years ago, this is where the PCT finally was completed. Canada to Mexico, 2,638 miles. So they've added a few since then. I haven't quite figured out why it is that after every every uh, break or night, the next day's trail has to leave going straight up. You can look. Well, let me turn the camera around. Goldilocks. You can see way down there. That's where we came from. Doesn't look that steep in the camera. That's because the camera is stupid. But uh, anyway, I'll swing around here and here we go. We're gonna go all the way up to the top of that. And again, looks like nothing in the camera, but uh, much more intimidating and a lot steeper through the naked eyeball. Some pretty flowers in bloom right here. And looking a little farther up the hill, you can see very interesting rock formations directly above us. And as I've said multiple times before, I am no geologist, but uh, I'd be interested to know how, how these uh, sedimentary rock formations uh, came to be. I, I'm assuming that at one point this this hillside a mountain that I'm on right now was actually the floor of an ocean which has now been pushed up but uh, very interesting looking terrain it's it's changing it seems like every day the terrain we're in changes dramatically just a couple of days ago we came over to those giant mountains right there dropped down into the valley to uh, the KOA and now we're on our way back up the mountains again. Oops, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> How you feeling? Need an oxygen tank? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank God for the breeze. We quickly realized the folly of our late start this morning. With every passing hour, the temperature climbed an additional 10 degrees. Even the slight breeze couldn't do enough to keep us cooled down. It became a race to the next water hole where we could take a break and get out of the scorching afternoon sun.
taking a break up here on top of the mountain enjoying a nice breeze and uh another through hiker just wandered by to say hi nomad hey, hey. say hello where are you from nomad i'm a full-time rver that's how i got my trail name nomad oh okay full-time oh, rver i got my rv park, parked down by warner cool right okay but now you're through hiking well uh enjoy the rest of your hike hopefully we'll catch you further up the trail okay He's leading me down the trail. Go ahead. I'll follow you all the way to Agua Dulce. Lead on. Show me where we're going. Oh. Now it's a game. Uh, where'd he go? Oh, there he is. Uh. God dang. We've been following him for like a hundred yards now. Aren't you getting tired, lizard? You got short legs. As I look in deep into this pool of water, I'm taken back six decades indeed to where it all started. I remember, I remember what it felt like to be swimming around with nothing but a tail to propel me. Oh look, there's my twin brother John, who was never born. Didn't swim fast enough, John. 
Too bad for you. Okay, as we enter the mines of Moria, hopefully we will not find anything here that's too scary. <laughs> oh, boy, there's a lot of backlight in this thing. Reverse. Oh, there we go. Wow, oh, how come it's so much brighter in the camera? Jesus, I can hardly see where the hell I'm going without the... Oh, well. Don't go towards the light. Don't go towards the light. This takes me back more than six decades. There, were, <laughs> there I was floating around in heavenly bliss, listening to my mother's digestive tract, gurgling her most recent hamburger. And then all of a sudden I saw a light at the end of a long tunnel. I felt a bright pressure all around me. The pressure became more and more intense. My joints were being twisted. My head was being squashed. The scene is exactly as I remembered it. A bright oval opening with water flowing through. There was water everywhere. Brightness. And suddenly I burst forward into the light. It burned my eyes. Ah! And then somebody swatted my ass. And thus began my life of pain and torture. Here we are in front of Vasquez Rocks County Park. Yep. And notice the sign there. No smoking allowed in the Vasquez Rocks. They don't want the rocks to catch on fire. So, okay. This diabolical trail here. I tried to screw around the edge of the rock and I was so concerned with not falling on my butt on the rock I didn't realize these plants are giant ass stinging nettles which drew to their name stung the shit out of my leg so now I've got nice welts going up and down my left leg oh well go ahead and blaze me a path there Goldilocks Okay, it's, 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 either, it's either the slippery rock face or plow through the nettles there and, oh, okay. That's how you do it, okay. Those rocks, I see a remnant of the Gorn that Captain Kirk fought back in Star Trek X episode 17. He looks just as vicious and scary as he did back in his Star Trek debut. Okay, I'm going to give all of you a quick tour of Vasquez Rocks. Uh, for those of you who may not recognize that name, uh, I promise that you have seen it in many, many Hollywood movies over the years. It's uh, been a site for countless westerns and sci-fi movies, and I think they even shot the the live action version of the Flintstones movie here back in the late 1990s. Um, many episodes of Star Trek, the original 1960s series were shot here. Let me get some better shots of these rocks you might recognize. Here's a, another angle. Super cool rock formations. Mistaken. Some of this is what they call conglomerate rock where you've got different types of rock all mixed together like that one but that's me trying to remember my uh, college geology class from 30 plus years ago but uh, super cool and exotic looking more amazing looking rock Ooh, ah. it is actually cool looking a bunch of birds nesting up in there I've got a sign here that says wild cucumber which uh, I assume refers to the stuff back behind it here. But 
they are lying to you not wild cucumber these are baby porcupine eggs you should know that from an earlier episode yep boy some of these botanists do not know what the hell they're talking about and here we have a sign that says california wild rose i think that was a girl i dated back in college if i'm not mistaken huh She's got a sign named after here at Vasquez Rocks. Apparently this is actual California wild rose here. A thorny little sucker. No flowers on it right now. And uh, incidentally right next to it we have some unnamed California poison oak. <laughs> I think the poison oak would be more important to put a sign next to rather than the wild rose. But um, I guess they don't want you to know about that. Yikes. All right, the formation you're looking at here, probably one of the most famous of the outcroppings at Vasquez Rocks. This is the one you see in so many of those westerns and science fiction movies, old Star Treks, all that cool stuff. I don't think we're gonna walk all the way over there because it's getting late and I'm dying of thirst and I am hoping to get to Agua Dulce to a hardware store to buy a new headlamp before they close in an hour. So anyway, Vasquez Rocks everybody. Well, past Vasquez Rocks, short road walk into the town of Agua Dulce. All right, here we are in Agua Dulce. We've got a place called the uh, Bullwinkles Home and Garden. I don't think we're gonna need anything there. The Sweetwater Bar and Grill. I definitely think we're gonna stop by there. Uh, and in the hardware store in the end. That's where I'm gonna see if I can find myself a headlamp so I can continue to go night hiking. And here is something it always makes me smile when I see this. Welcome to Agua Dulce, Pacific Crest Trail Hikers. You are welcome. I'm happy to be here. I'd like to give special recognition to places that I think that uh, PCT hikers really need to give attention and support to. This is one of it here, Sweet Butter Bar and Grill. We got a big sign out front, welcome on PCT hikers. Bunch of uh, Bunch of hikers have already signed it, but uh, the one thing I wanted to highlight is if you look right here, I have a public notice of application for ownership change. Turns out that this place is under new ownership just about six weeks ago. They literally bought the restaurant right when that COVID virus uh, thing hit hard. So this new restaurant is really struggling for customers uh, and trying to keep afloat. So. BCT hikers coming this way. Throw some love to these people. They make a hell of a good hamburger. Uh, let me show you what's, well, wrapped up in foil. But anyway, that's the cowboy. And it came with a whole pile of fries. Good one. And uh, mine was called the California Burger. It's a half pound Angus burger with avocado on it and bacon. And uh, it was, it's delicious. Uh, heck of a good hamburger so so again uh coming to agua dulce sweetwater cafe and grill this is the place to stop get yourself a good meal so i just finished my meal uh, here in agua dulce and uh the local sheriff pulled up uh sheriff, Debbie martinez how you guys doing yeah and we were just uh talking he was talking about pct hikers and said that they are uh well, they're, they're, they're welcome. more than welcome here. We miss you guys. This year I know has been kind of off with the whole COVID thing, but the business here definitely depend on you guys. You guys are more than welcome. We never have any issues with any of the hikers. You guys are very respectful, and the town enjoys you guys and enjoys hearing your stories, where you guys come from, from all over the world. So please come on through. Okay, well, 
there you go. I mean, there's no higher source to, to hear how welcome PCT hikers are on the trail uh, and in the trail towns, particularly uh, for Agua Dulce. So you guys come on through. And when you do, say hi to Sheriff Martinez. So thanks sure. again. No problem. Have a good one. Hey, it's about 8.30 at night, and we're just now getting back on the trail. Um, it was about a two-and-a-half-mile road, mar <laughs> road march, I'm sorry, road walk, uh, to get from Agua Dulce out here to the trailhead. And uh, we actually got a, uh, a ride from somebody, uh, uh, the super sweet woman who's a waitress or a service person, whatever the <laughs> right term is, uh, there at the Sweetwater Bar and Cafe. Um, Goldilocks has been fighting a horrible migraine headache all afternoon, and she's literally just almost in tears. She's miserable. And the thought of having to do that road walk was just breaking her heart. But um, this uh, waitress who helped us, her name was uh, Emily. Emily, shout out to Emily. Hopefully she's watching this video. I want to tell you thank you very much for just taking a couple of strangers into your car and running up the road a couple of miles to save us uh, um, a walk to our campsite. Um, normally a couple of miles is not a big deal, but... The way Goldilocks is feeling now with her head, I was I was afraid we were never going to even make it out of town tonight. So, uh, once again, just a, a great example of how we have met just the nicest people who will help you out for no personal gain. Um, you know, people like Emily really restore our faith in humanity. So, shout out to her and everybody else at the Sweetwater Bar and Grill who was uh, just nice as could be and friendly. They fill up our water bottles for us for... For, for nothing um anyway so hopefully we can get up here just walk a short distance find a place to put up our tent for the night and give goldilocks a good night's sleep and i will hope when she wakes up in the morning that that migraine uh will be gone so good night you guys